Hey guys, it's Lynn. Welcome back to my library. Guess what? It snowed! Snow is nice the first time it happens during the season, but if you're in Connecticut like me, after about the thousandth time, you get pretty sick of it and you're just ready for spring or, in my case, hot weather. I want it to be so hot that I feel like I'm melting. I don't know why, it's just what I like. But I live in Connecticut, so I don't get that all year. But the good news is I got out of work early because of the weather. Woo! Yeah! So, it has its plus side. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about wintry slash cozy reads. Books that really make me feel like all cuddly and that I want to, you know, want to get curled up under a blanket with my cocoa and snuggle with the cat. I feel like I say that in every video, but I really do like snuggling with my cat. So let's get the elephant out of the room. My first book that I want to recommend is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, or if you're American like me, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I have the British editions, the American editions, and I'm starting to get the illustrated editions as they come out. I also have them on my e-reader. I have a Nook. Most people have a Kindle, but I guess I'm a snob and have to have a Barnes & Noble version of a Kindle. What can you do? I always associate Harry Potter with winter just because, especially in the first book, because, you know, Christmas is such a big, important part of the first book. You know, Harry has never had a real Christmas, and, you know, he gets presents for the first time. It's when he gets his dad's invisibility cloak, and all that. It's just, it feels so magical and wintry that I just, I love it. I'll read it anytime, but winter feels like the perfect time to read it. So that's my first pick. And if anybody doesn't know what Harry Potter is about, have you been living under a rock? I mean, crawl out from under your rock, pick up Harry Potter, and you can thank me later. The next book that I want to recommend is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I just read Rebecca for the first time last year, and I loved it. I wasn't sure if I was going to, but, oh, man, it was just so atmospheric and mysterious. And even though the book itself, the story, takes place over multiple seasons, much like Harry Potter, it, it gives you that feeling of, like, a blustery, cold type weather, you know, where you just want to curl up by a fire. The characters, they're so great. Um, Mrs. Danvers is just pure evil. Not as evil as Umbridge, but close. Very close. I love Rebecca, and if you haven't read Rebecca, you really probably should because it is just so good. I, I don't think I've heard of anybody that's read this and didn't love it. I can't wait to pick up more Daphne du Maurier because if her books are anything like Rebecca, I'm going to love all of them. I think my smoke detector battery is low. <laughs> Next book I want to recommend is Chronicles of Narnia. Specifically, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe because that is when Narnia is all, um, it's all engulfed in snow and ice because of the White Witch. She's created this, you know, permanent winter. And it just, it reminds me so much of Christmas and just, you know, wrapping yourself up in a thick coat and trudging through snow, maybe taking a sleigh ride like Edmund does with the White Witch because... In The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Edmund's kind of a punk. But I love him anyway. Edmund turns into a badass. If you don't know what The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is about, it's about the, these four children, the Pevensies. Edmund um, 
Susan, Lucy, and Peter, and they discover a magical land called Narnia inside the wardrobe. It's really cool. I always wanted my own wardrobe because I really want to go to Narnia. It's, I don't even know how to explain it. It just makes me so happy. And I think everybody should read it. Getting down to it. The next book that I want to recommend is Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. I read this last year as well, and I really enjoyed it. It's set in Iceland, and it's a fictional account of the last woman executed in Iceland, Agnes. She was a real person, but this kind of um, takes its liberties and creates a story out of her life and the incident that she was convicted of um, and sentenced to death. She's also sent to go live with a family prior to her execution to live out her remaining days. So it follows, it follows the family and their reservations on, as to having a criminal um, living with them. And it also follows Agnes as she tries to reconcile, you know, the fact that she's going to die. And it's just very, um, you, it's so descriptive. You can feel how cold it is. And it's just, I mean, if this book doesn't scream winter, I don't know what does. And the last book that I want to recommend is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I loved this book so much. And it's not typically the type of book that I read because it's very slow burning and um, there's not a lot of action going on. And I like things that keep my, you know, attention and it's just going, going. Cause I, have, I have ADD. I need things to move at a pace. <laughs> Sad but true. But the Night Circus is about two magicians. Since they were very young children, unwittingly they were pitted against each other in this sort of magical competition. And... They don't know who their opponent is. And, you know, it follows them from there. And they don't know when the competition begins. They don't know where it's going to happen. You know, they just kind of have to go with it. And, I mean, the rules are really very kind of loose um, because they don't know much about what it entails, who they're going to be opposing, um, you know, and it's just so magical. And the reason that I think of this as for winter is because there is a setting where in the night circus, which I wish there really was a night circus because I would totally go and I would I would quit my job and run away just to be part of the night circus. <laughs> it's just so oh it sounds so cool. I mean it's the, the theme is black and white and red and those are totally my colors and it's just it shows up in the middle of the night. There's no notice. It just just is there when you wake up and that's kind of like how I like things. I like to be spontaneous. So anyway, one of the tents in the circus is kind of like a winter wonderland. So that's what makes me think of this book for a winter read. There, There's a love story to it. There's magic. There's enchantment. It it just, it made me feel so good reading it, and I can't wait to read it again. I want to say that I read it in 2016, so it's coming due to have a reread. That's it. So let me know. Hold up.
like my Marauder's Map mug. I got it at Wizarding World and I dropped it and the handle broke, but my brother-in-law is the best super gluer, aka Craggler. If you've ever seen the Lego movie, you'll know what Craggle is. And he fixed it for me and I'm so happy because who knows when I'm going to get to go back and get a new one. Anyway, what books do you guys like to read in the winter? Give me some suggestions. I'm up for it. Um, you know, have you read any of these books? If so, what did you think? Did you like them? Um, let's have a conversation. So yeah, I'll see you guys later. Talk to you soon. Bye.